For this video, I set out to create a prompt framework that you can follow and makes generating great AI videos a breeze. By following the steps I'm about to share with you, not only will you immediately see better results for character consistency and cinematic quality, but you'll find you have much more control over every aspect of your videos. And just to make your life a little easier, I taught that framework I came up with to a GPT, so you can have a conversation in ChatGPT instead of actually writing long, complicated prompts. Hi, my name is Glibitry, and I make videos all about the landscape of AI experiences. You might know me because I spent a lot of time working on similar kinds of prompts for image models. And the GPT I created for Midjourney and Dolly 3, well, it remains in the top 10 of image generator GPTs of all time. And it's been used more than 600,000 times. What I made today is a very similar idea. I let you use a large language model to refine and complete your ideas, and my GPT will spit out a prompt that is fully defined for video generation. This is especially important for video because with a video, there is so much more to define. Think about it, right? For an image, there's just a few things you need to describe to make sure that the image model doesn't need to make things up and add things you didn't ask for. All images are going to have a style that, to lock it in, you need to describe it in your prompt. Your image is also going to have a primary subject. Could be a person or a building or whatever, but you'll need to describe what that looks like in your prompt too. Behind that subject, there's going to be a background. You've also got a camera angle that you're seeing everything from, and, well, that's kind of it. If you have a dog in the Pixar style, on a roller coaster, straight on, and you've described all of that in sufficient detail, an image generator like Midjourney is going to give you basically the same image every time. But Video is different. It's a lot harder. You need to explain those same things. Style, subject, background, and angle. But also, all of those things can change frame by frame. Videos could start off looking one way, and by the end of the clip you generate, it may have changed completely. Your subject is probably going to be moving around, especially if it's a character. The details of your background could also be moving around. Almost 100% of the time, your camera angle is going to be changing over time, too. In fact, you might also sometimes be switching from one subject as your primary focus to another. And these are the things that make video cool. They change, and you can have a dynamic scene that could be really powerful for storytelling. And that's all great. Until you start thinking about how you're going to write a prompt to describe all of those things reliably, right? To tell a story, you need a lot of videos, and doing a good job describing every single scene gets complicated. Even if you're starting with an input image and you lock in your first frame, there is a lot for the video model to mess up. All too often, the face you're working with can just disintegrate or transform wildly. I've had faces just turn into, like, gross noise instead of looking like the person they started as. And the other reason why this is so important is compared to image models that have been out for a few years now, video models are a much less mature software package. Midjourney can do amazing things with very short and non-detailed prompts. If you just write nature documentary footage, wow, I didn't spell a single word correctly, hang on, Midjourney is going to come up with still frames for you, and those frames are going to have pretty good information in them. It creatively interpreted nature documentary footage as something focusing on this bird, or something focusing on this dragonfly, or this waterfall, or river. But if we take one of these frames to a new video generator like Sora, and you use a prompt that's as short as that to describe what you want, well, let's see. I could take this image to Sora and just say that same thing. Nature documentary footage. And when that generates, we'll see how Sora interpreted the very simple prompt. And looking at this, it sucks. The video model doesn't know what to do with the dragonfly on the screen or what to do with the background, and it just has these things shifting around randomly. The camera movement is kind of crazy, and while maybe frame by frame there's some coherence here, it still looks like the same dragonfly during the entire thing, but there's no reason behind what was generated. So, 
Instead, in order to get what we're actually looking for, we need to describe everything we want to see the clip do within the prompt. And that gets hard. Trying to write a paragraph that includes details about the starting frame, the movement of the camera, the subject and the background, including the interplay of light and shadow, well, you can see why it's so easy to write bad prompts and get bad results. And that's why I gave ChatGPT a template that, when filled out, it's going to appropriately describe the short clip in a way the video model gets everything it needs. If I ask my GPT to use this as a starting frame to make nice footage for a nature documentary, ChatGPT is going to do a lot better at coming up with what happens here than the video model it does. And that's simply because ChatGPT has a lot more context about the world than the video model does. So if I copy this prompt and take it to Sora instead, we'll see how much better it does. I'm expecting the difference here to be night and day with this prompt that is fully defined compared to what we had when it was almost empty. Obviously, Sora isn't always perfect, but we can see starting with the frame and turn into this flying dragonfly shot that actually mimics a lifelike experience for flying. We're no longer hitting problems with the prompt, and instead we're hitting problems with the video model itself, and that's a much better place to be working with. I can't afford the Sora Pro version that gives higher quality and longer videos, and also working with characters, because $200 a month is crazy. So to show you a bit more about how this works, we're going to jump over to Hiluo AI, which you might have heard referred to as Minimax. Like a bunch of these models, they also have an option to upload an image as a starting frame. And just like Sora, it's going to do a lot better working with that image if the text prompt you use is properly consistent with that frame. And unlike Sora, it actually lets you upload frames with characters and people on them. So we can use the GPT to make the subsequent motion well-defined. So if I want to create this skateboarder, it's easy enough. I'll upload my starting frame that I created in mid-journey to my GPT. And then I just want to describe what it is I want to happen. Maybe I'll say, can you make the skateboard spin around a few times before the boy lands on it? Then keeps riding down, how about the sidewalk? ChatGPT now writes a prompt that describes the situation I asks for, and it does that in the format I taught it. I also love that this comes in a code block so I can copy it and paste it directly into Minimax. Now I can put my image here, and this model 12V01 Live does a great job with 2D and animated styles like this is. So now if I generate this, and this is gonna take a while, so I'll time travel, snap those fingers, and whoa, time traveling is convenient. There, it looks like it should be done now. And we can see we have some nice spinning and he lands fairly nicely compared to what we might have had if, well, we wrote a much more basic prompt. It's a really nice clean video of exactly what we asked for. The movement for the kickflip at the beginning is a little bit awkward, but it definitely cleans it up and there's nothing totally unreasonable for an animation style. And it's still the same character all the way through. Maybe gets a little deformed while he's out in the distance over here. And I want to reiterate that working with this prompt is so much easier than if I had a big long block of paragraph texts. If maybe I wanted to make it so he, instead of landing on the sidewalk, I wanted him to maybe land on a rail instead, I could notice these parts it talks about for the sidewalk and replace them. Or I can ask ChatGPT. Could you rewrite that prompt so he lands and grinds on a rail instead? And it's very easy to see exactly how Hylio AI is going to interpret this prompt. The board completes its rotation. He lands smoothly on the rail, locking the trucks into place. He grinds effortlessly along the rail with a confident grin before hopping off at the end down the sidewalk, his arms outstretched. What a reasonable interpretation of my request that works very nicely with this starting frame. So now if I generate this and time travel again, we get another excellent result. Making small adjustments and big adjustments become very easy to do, and you can drill down into as much detail as you want to. For these, I was just playing with subject motion, so I left 
almost the entire prompt alone, and I changed the gestures I had her make. Obviously, these don't use a starting frame because they start from slightly different angles. Um, Hilo has another feature, subject reference, that works very similarly to starting prompts, but the video model is generating every single frame. And it's really cool how much about the clip is defined from just the prompt plus that subject reference. Every single result looks so similar compared to how it might have been if my prompt was less specific. By the way, the subject reference image has her wearing entirely different clothing, but this prompt is so good that it cleanly replaces it to the same over-the-shoulder sweater, and it looks great every time. This unlocks a lot of potential, and there's a lot to talk about. I want to show you step by step how you can use this GPT to put yourself into amazing videos, how you can use it to repose your characters in any style, and a bunch of surprising and really cool use cases. But it's a little too much for this first video. Today, I really just wanted to share it with you and give you a chance to try it, and I'll work on some more detailed content in the coming weeks. For this one, I tried to stay model agnostic. I obviously had to show you examples, but I want to make it clear that this prompt framework is generic enough to work for just about every video model you might use. We can talk about how it might work in Runway and Act 1, but as we get to more specific use cases, it really is going to start depending on what model you're using and how you're using it, so I want to dedicate whole videos to those and give you only the best information for what you're actually doing. If you are having specific problems that I haven't covered in a video yet, or you want to work with me directly on your own projects, I'm happy to help. I recently started offering one-on-one -on -one coaching calls, and it's been so much fun meeting you guys and learning about what you've been using these tools for and my GPTs for. If a call with me sounds interesting to you, the other link in the description, the one that's not my GPT, will be more info about that. Thank you so much for watching, good luck, and I'll see you in the next one.